Hey gang, Clay here, I'm at Mountain Music Exchange and I'm with my good friend, Mr. Kurt. All right, Mr. Kurt has a super cool guitar in. He's been waiting on it for, I don't know, I'll let him tell you, but we're gonna go ahead and get this guitar out because we can't wait anymore. So if you will do the honors, Mr. Kurt. Yes. The Gretsch, Malcolm Young Signature Edition guitar just released and finally here at the store and more importantly it's finally in Kurt's yes. hands all right so uh Kurt first off how long have you been waiting on this guitar uh well Kevin ordered it the day it was announced at NAMM which was on Thursday and that was at the like the very first week of June so yeah six and a half months wow good grief but man so so honestly just by looking at it having it in your hand I know you've played a few riffs on it is it worth it Absolutely, every penny. Man, that is great. So, um, tell me a little bit about, this is a very unconventional looking guitar for your non-ACDC like guys out there. Uh, I, I think me and Kurt are pretty familiar with whys and hows and all that, but uh, this is a pretty non-conventional looking guitar. You've got yes. one pickup, you've got a very different looking tailpiece here, you've got a bunch of buttons where switches and knobs used to be. Uh, tell me a little bit about the hows and whys on this, Kurt. Um, well, the hows and whys, a lot of it was basically, um, it was Malcolm searching for the sound of ACDC. Uh, the guitar started out as a, a, a red 1963 Gretsch Jet Firebird that was actually given to him by a bandmate of his brother George. A uh, guy's name was Harry Vanda, and the band was the Easy Beats in Australia. And, and when they kind of went away, they gave the he gave this guitar to Malcolm. So it started out as a bone stock '63 Gretsch and, Jet Firebird. And so when Malcolm first got it, that was it, bone yep. stock, right? Bone stock. Okay. And uh, he uh, he played it for a while, and then started tinkering with it. And the first thing he did was he routed out for a a Gibson PAF humbucker like to go in the middle. Traditional PAF type. Yeah, and cool. in, in the process, he moved the two switches that were here down here and put in a volume pot for the third pickup so that he could control the volume, turn it off completely. Um, and he ended up not liking it and not liking the neck pickup and took those out and just left it hollow. And you can see, too, I hope that you can get a glimpse of this. I've been doing this for people out at the, out in the store, too. But that is, if you're ever curious as to the hollow nature of uh, a Gretsch professional series jet uh, or double jet firebird any of those I mean that's pretty telling and not to mention you can kind of stick your finger all the way down yeah. like it routes out all the way kind of down into here it's all the way down yeah it's a super chambered body super chambered it's uh, so when they say these are semi hollow and they don't look terribly semi hollow because of the thickness no they definitely yeah. definitely are so um, what led to like the finish here? Because this is you said it was red. Now it's yeah. definitely not red. It's natural. Yeah, how it, it started its life out. There were certain models of the Gretches to get the colors the way they were. They actually used drum head cover on them, which makes and, sense because Gretsch Drum Company and Gretsch yeah. Guitar were the same thing at the time. And yeah, and it started out that his Gretsch had the drum head cover on it. It was red, and years of wear and tear it started to chip and it was bothering him and he got mad one day and took a screwdriver to it and started prying off the drum head cover. And then after he got done with doing all of that, he decided to sand the, the surface off um, just to get it back down yeah. to a natural wood. So, so, okay, first of all, I'm assuming there's a volume and tone here and yeah. this is like the master volume master that volume. would have been on this model anyway, yep. regardless, right? Yep. I think it's really cool how they have still like the pickup screw holes here. So they even paid that much attention to detail to give you that out of this package, out of a production guitar, you know. Um, I know one thing that doesn't look common to any of the Jets or Firebirds that I've seen is this tailpiece. What's going on with the tailpiece? Yeah, guy? this was actually the stock tremolo that came on the 63 Jet Firebird. Um, he had it on there and he never used the tremolo arm, so he took it off. Uh, basically, it was just there to work as a normal Brit or normal tailpiece on it, and he just he kept it there. And and during one of its 
periods where he was tinkering with it, trying to, you know, in the ever search for sound. <laughs> right. He removed it and he removed the space control bridge and opted for just a, a uh, intonatable tailpiece at the bridge. And it lasted that way for, I think, about a year or so. And yeah. then he realized it wasn't the sound, he wasn't getting the same sound. So he had it put back to the way it was before and most people who, who discuss why he did that feel that the shorter length in the strings, that he was hearing a difference in the sound that wasn't where he wanted it to I be. I could see that. Maybe not enough tension. So when you hit those chords, it didn't like really hit as hard. Yeah. You know, I do, I do think this is cool because I haven't seen this in person on a Gretsch, maybe in my entire life, but certainly not on a production Gretsch. So they had to like completely recreate this and make it basically just, just for this yeah. guitar, right? Just for the guitar. And it's locked down and comes with no bar, just the way, <laughs> right, right. Just the way Malcolm had it. Yeah, I don't ever recall ever having seen this guitar in in concert, you know, with a tremolo bar yeah, at all no, under any circumstances. No. I think that would undermine a lot. Um, cool, it's got a maple top and mahogany backsides. It's a mahogany neck too, I'm assuming, right? Yep. Uh, this is made in Japan. It has... Um, but it has shallower tuners. Most made in Japan yeah. stuff has goto tuners, which are great tuners. This like has legit made in Germany shallower tuners. They are cool. This thing holds tune awesome. This guitar bangs out riffs with this TV Jones Powertron pickup. It is a Powertron. It's a right? Filtertron. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was a Powertron. My Filtertron. Mistake. All right. So this bangs out with these TV Jones Filtertrons like none other. It sounds amazing. The simplicity is the key here and it's yes. got it in droves. It's it's just a super cool guitar. So you've still got the case candy and everything yeah. with it. So I thought we would maybe show everybody some of the yep. case candy. It's got a bunch of really cool retro throwback stuff in it that I think is really neat. It's it's and all stuff you that you would really have gotten appreciate. if you bought a 63 Jet Firebird. All right. <laughs> That's just the price tag. We'll day. get it. We don't we'll need get to, it. We don't need to see that. Okay, everybody's probably <laughs> already seen this. Yeah. <laughs> so we're good. But in case you haven't, you can meet the gang at mountainmusicexchange.com. Anyway, <laughs> um, so I'll let you start here. Uh, right. Just kind of so go through everything. We don't really need oh, no. to. What was that? Uh, that's just a piece of paper. Okay, cool. Uh, we don't need the receipt. Uh, <laughs> Typical case T warranty yeah, for the TKL case. TKL case, um, kind of a standard case. It's got a cool plush interior, good and sturdy. Latches are good and strong. Yeah, locking. Um, I'll be honest, would have been cool with some kind of like Malcolm motif on the front yeah. or something, but maybe that's just how Malcolm carried it, so maybe they're staying true to that. Could be. I'm not gonna complain. Um, first thing is the OK card. Right. Which so, this guitar is OK. Um, <laughs> it's got all the boxes checked here. Suggesting, you know, finish, workmanship, construction, nut, bridge, action, intonation, electronics, playing test. I, I don't, I mean, it seems superfluous because I don't think you're going to get one of these, right? Yeah. And then one of these is not checked. Yeah. I kind of want to see that, though. Like, yeah, construction, mm, ship it. It's <laughs> just know. their way of showing you that it's been through every <laughs> right, step. Right, right, that it has actually, there's a quality control process. Uh, so then they, you get into these nice little recreations of the original cards you would have got um, touting some of the new things that were on the 63 yeah. Jet Firebird. This, like, this is for the Filtertron pickup, and yeah. it explains it. And it's the Filtertron, Filtertron head adjustment. So it shows you how to like adjust the adjustable pole pieces in the Filtertron, and uh, just some stuff like that. It kind of gives you a layout here of, you know, the guitar electronics. It's just done in a really cool, it's on like cardstock, and it's just, it's printed in a way that looks like you would have got this guitar in the 60s or something. I mean, it's really cool. Yeah. Uh, another one is for the Neo Classic fretboard. <laughs> yeah, uh, the fretboard on this, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, is an ebony fretboard. Um, you know, and this is just sort of a throwback type advertisement for that. Um, you know, conservative beauty, classic fidelity, satin, ebony feel. Uh, it's a good, like a 12 inch radius, I think. It's a pretty flat fretboard. And then there's for the Gretsch Space Control Bridge, which you don't see very much of anymore. No, it's not, um, it's not a, a common super bridge. common bridge, no. And also, this, it shows you know how like, you can thread it around. And, you know, it's just got kind of an ABC thing on there, just a real quick thing. Gives you a little more information on the back. Uh, your typical Gretsch warranty card. Yeah, this, this is gonna come in any Gretsch you get. I think yeah. maybe even the Electromatic series, but definitely all the professional series. Your typical Gretsch owner's manual. Ah, interesting. Guitar guide. 
lots of ins and outs, do's and don'ts. Yes. How to. How to adjust. Neat. And the final oh, coup de gras. The coup de gras. The yes. Certificate of authenticity. The Gritch certified Gritch guarantee for this guitar. Um, is this limited to a certain number? I don't they've, know if they ever released the actual They've never announced. Number. They said it was going to be a production model. Um, due to the construction of it and everything, it's kind of estimated that it's not going to be a huge production run of them. It could be a few years. It could be, you know, a year. Um, I The way I see it is because it's kind of a niche audience to buy it. You're either a Malcolm fan or an ACDC fan or you're a huge Gretsch That's, signature collector yeah, or something right, right. that most likely when you know, the surplus beats the demand, it'll probably go away. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. And plus, I think it's cool. There's finally just a production run of these. It's not a crazy custom shop or it's not something somebody's had to put together to, to make a replica of. You know, I, I love the Angus Young SGs. It's just, there are so many of those. And then it feels like Malcolm went completely as like an unsung hero for yeah. so long without his own, you know, signature model that's, Relatively, and this guitar is like twenty what six ninety nine, I think. Was yeah, that right? Something like that. Um, so I think it's cool that at least you don't have to pay like a car price now, <laughs> you know, to get a Malcolm Young guitar and to get a really authentic Malcolm Young guitar. I'm actually going to venture to guess that this Malcolm Young guitar is more authentic than the SG, probably like, than the SG yeah. Angus model you know yeah i would almost say it probably is because i mean malcolm they they you know gretch made a couple of models of the malcolm guitar with one with a single pickup and one with two yeah. pickups and they weren't really his guitar yeah this is one that when they did this for the custom shop that he actually signed off on a plus two i think it's like malcolm has a really unique guitar and angus plays Probably, really a variety of SGs, and I don't think they're terribly modified. There might be some electronic swaps or anything, but ultimately they're still very Gibson SG. Yeah. This is very Malcolm Young. Yes. It's not necessarily very Jet Firebird or no, you know no. anything like that, but it is very Malcolm Young. So if you are into Malcolm Young, this is the one. If you're into ACDC, this is the guitar. It's the sound. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> to a T. Yeah. So um, I think that's got us. Kurt, thank you a ton for bringing thank your you. guitar and showing it off, and thank you for waiting as long as you had to oh. wait, man. Um, thank you guys for watching. Of course, give us a big like and a subscribe on YouTube at Mountain Music Exchange. Uh, of course, you can always still check us out here on Facebook, and you can check out everything we have, including uh, if we get more of these Malcolm Youngs in, and I hope it's not another six months, at mountainmusicexchange.com. So, I'm Clay and Kurt, and we will see you guys later. Thank you all. Rock and roll.